Ooh, hi, Ash. It is Ash, right? Yeah, it is. It's so uh, good to see you. You running? Yeah, I'm doing the Bedford half. It's this Sunday. Oh, right. Great. I was thinking of doing a half marathon, but then I remembered I don't like running. You told me you had a cat. I remembered his name, Voltaire. A uh, ginger tabby? Yeah, I call him Volts. He finds Voltaire a bit pretentious. He's not massively into 18th century French philosophy and literature. He's pretty down to earth. Well, you know, for a cat. Um, I'm afraid I think he's dead. I saw him lying on the side of the road. I think a car might have hit him. I saw the name on the collar. I'm sorry, Nora. Oh no. Don't. <laughs> Mr. Neal, I'm so sorry I'm late. My cat died last night and I had to bury him. Well, actually, someone helped me bury him, but then I was left alone in my flat. And then I overslept and then I woke up until midday. And then, like, I had to rush in the morning, so I'm so sorry that's why I'm late. Listen, Nora, I like you. I know you've got a lot of mental health stuff. Yeah, everyone's got mental health stuff. You know what I mean. Well, I'm doing better generally. The doctor says it's only situational depression. It just, I keep having new situations. And I haven't taken any sick days off for that at all. I mean, except for when my mom, you know, but other than that. How long have you worked here? 12 years and 11 months and three days. That's a long time. I feel like you're made for better things. You're in your late 30s, Nora. I'm 35. But you got so much going for you. Aren't you teaching someone piano? Yeah, one person. What are you trying to say, Neil? It's never too late to pursue a dream, Nora. You're well qualified. A degree in philosophy? Well, there's not a very high degree of philosophers in bed for time honest, Neil. You went to uni, a year in London, and then back? I didn't have a choice. You don't have choices, Nora. There's such a thing as free will. I didn't want to have a conversation about my dead mom or even Dan, because Neil had found out my backing out of a wedding within two days' notice was the most fascinating love story. I'm happy here. Except you aren't. I mean, I'm happy with this job. Happy as in satisfied. Neil, I need this job. You're a good person. You care about the environment, the homeless, and the world. I need a job. You need freedom. I don't want freedom. This isn't a nonprofit organization, Nora. But it's starting to become one. Look, Neil, is this about what I said last week about needing to modernize things? Because I've got some ideas on how to bring younger people. No. This place used to be just guitars. String theory. Get it? I diversified. Made it work. Though when times get tough, I can't pay you to put off customers with your face looking like a wet weekend. What? Listen, Nora, I'm afraid I'm going to have to let you go. Dear whoever, I had all the chances to make something out of my life, and I blew every one of them. Through my own carelessness and misfortune, the world has retreated from me, and so now it makes perfect sense that I should retreat from the world. If I felt it was possible to stay, I would, but I don't, and so I can't. I make life worse for people. I have nothing to give. I'm sorry. Be kind to each other. Bye. No. Midnight. Be careful! Please, you have to be careful. Who are you? I'm the librarian. Mrs. Elm? Perhaps. I remember those rainy afternoons playing chess with Miss Elm in the library. I also remember the day my dad died and when Miss Elm broke the news to me. I hugged Miss Elm so close and cried on her polo neck. I also remember Miss Elm's voice telling me at the time, things will get better. It's going to be alright, Nora.
Between life and death, there's a library. And within that library, the shelves go on forever. Every book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived, to see how things would be different if you had made other choices. Would you have done anything different if you had the chance to change your regrets? So I am dead. No. Listen carefully. Between life and death, death is only outside. Well, I should go there because I want to die. No, that's not how death works. While the Midnight Library still stands, you will be preserved, so you must choose how you want to live your life. What's happening? Every life contains many millions of decisions. Some big, some small. But every time one decision is taken over another, the outcome differs. These books are portals to all lives you could be living. If you had just done one thing differently, you would be living a totally different life story. And they all exist in the Midnight Library. As long as your clock stays at midnight, you have as much time as you want and as many possibilities as you want. This book is the source to all your problems and the answers to them. What is it? The Book of Regrets. Every regret you've ever had since the day you were born is recorded in here. I regret not getting I regret married. The time I regret not applying to be a master's degree. I regret degree. not, I regret not keeping I healthy. healthy. I regret all those working ones and that. I regret, regret not working with animals. I regret not. And now that you've looked at them, what is one regret you wish you could undo? Me and Dan's dream was always to own a pub together when we got married, but we never did. I want to pick the book where I didn't back out of me and Dan's wedding two days before. I want to pick the life where I actually stayed with him and followed through. As you wish. Burgundy Square Cafe is what we said we would name the pub. So I guess this means we made it. Uh oh. Hey Dan. We did well tonight. Not bad for a Tuesday night. You got to tell AJ to change the lunch. So our pub's doing good? Yeah. This was it. So I saw you talking to Aaron tonight. What were you guys talking about? You know, the usual stuff. Really? I've never seen you guys talk before. Oh. So how's Will doing? Oh, he's really good. He says hi. Really? No, he didn't say that. I don't know what I'm thinking. What's going on with you? You're not acting like yourself. It's nothing. I'm fine, I swear. Come on now, I thought you were starting to trust me after you know what. Yeah, I know, but I just want to hear you say it again. Well, since the stuff with Aaron. Aaron, the one I was talking to tonight? Am I gonna be beaten up forever about one stupid drunk mistake? One drunk mistake? Okay, fine, two. Two? Seriously, why drag all this up? Remember what the counselor said. Do you ever think that we're just not right for each other? Like, do you ever feel lucky to have me? Like, do you know how close I was leaving you two days before the wedding? And do you know how messed up you would have been if I hadn't gone through the wedding? Really, you've got some high self-esteem. Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't everybody? What's wrong with self-esteem? You know what? What the heck? We're done. Well, how was it? I thought owning the pub with Dan was like my dream life, but I wasn't even happy in that one too. Well, what makes you happy? Voltaire. I wish I never let him go outside and I just kept him indoors. That way he never would have got hit by a car and died. Okay, here you go. Why was Volt still dead in this one? I didn't let him go outside. How did he die? I, I don't understand. Well, did he really get hit by a car? Thinking about it, he had no physical injuries. What do you mean? Volt had an underlying condition. He was gonna die either way. You were a really good cat owner, and there was nothing you could do. He loved you very much. That's why he died somewhere where you couldn't be there, because he didn't want you to see it. He really did love you. Now look back at the Book of Regrets. Look at the last page and the last page only. It, it disappeared. Yeah, because you don't regret being a bad cat owner. Now that's your goal. Go through all of the regrets and try to get them erased. And maybe you'll find one where you really like to live. What if I'm not happy in any of them? Well, the only way to learn 
I still have supposed to be happy in so many lives where I'm successful, have a family, people love me, but I feel like it's not my life, like, I'm taking someone's life, I'm just stepping in for them, and so, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Oh no, what? 12.01. Sorry, Nora, you're out of time, I can't give you any more books. I know what I want to do. ambulance and it's something very bad something I, didn't, I shouldn't have done it's quite a revelation to discover that the place you wanted to escape is the exact same place you've escaped from that the prison wasn't the place but the perspective this life was mine and this is my own purpose <laughs>